brothers and sisters, we thank the Lord for the opportunity to come into a new season, a new season, a new time. And there are certain things the Lord wants us to focus on. One of them is holiness unto Him. To come to the place where we are pure to the core, our intention, our mind, our heart, everything, free of anything that is inherently evil or negative, holy unto the Lord, separated unto Him for His purpose. And secondly, to also concentrate on asking for grace for us to have compassionate hearts, compassion. So holiness unto the Lord, compassion to people, especially those the Lord has assigned to us that we go around with hearts that are tender. Let's take hold of these things and, the, and by the grace of the Lord, let's keep watching developments in Israel. Because no matter what you do, Israel is an integral part of God's prophetic calendar. As a matter of fact, it's central to it. So what goes on in Israel, from the city of Jerusalem, you take a beeline to the city of Washington, D.C., by the way of Rome. If you can connect these three cities, you know what? You have a little idea of how things will pan out. So watch in Israel. Watch it unfold in political process, even now. On that note, we're going to pray and get into our story today. Father in heaven, we bless you because known unto you are all your works from the beginning of time. Thank you because you have a determined counsel. And you know what each day and each week and each month holds in store. And nothing can change the course of history. Therefore, we ask, Lord, that you give us the grace to align with your will. Let your will be done in Israel today. Let it manifest that which you have approved in your determinate counsel. And let your will be done in the United States of America and in Europe. Regarding the Russia-Ukraine issue, let your will be done. Lord, we now ask you to speak to us through your word in Yeshua's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we began to do, you know, course uh, 208 authority. The old course code is 115, and at times we make the mistake of not correcting that, but please, it is the new course code is 208 because now on the 200 level courses, and we began with taking lesson one and two before a short break, and then we continued with lesson three. Today, we go to lesson four. The nature, the content, and context of a true authority. We've talked about legitimate and illegitimate authority, true and false authority, their characteristics, how to know what the law requires. In Acts 1 1, we see a very critical truth. The gospel is all about Yeshua Jesus, what he began to do, what he began to teach, and as it was with him. So should it be with us today. If we must understand and excise true authority, we must look at Yeshua and the paradigm with which he, who is the head of all principality and power, you know, how he excised authority. He who everything was hinged on him, Matthew 28, 18, Philippians 2, 5, you know, all the way to 11, Colossians 2, 10. The Bible says we are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. And brothers and sisters, so all saints, whether male or female, you know what? We are sons of Elohim and the kingdom. The Lord wants us to truly understand He who is truly the sum of all authority. We are told in Colossians 1.16, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. The sum of everything that has to do with authority is in him as a person. So the question, therefore, is this. How did he, for whom all things were made, how did he live? How did he exercise the anonymous authority at his disposal when he walked on the earth as the incarnated son? What example did he leave for us to follow? 
Did he come with a swagger riding like a knight on a shiny with shining armor, sitting on a gilt edge throne, expecting other people to come and bow every moment to him? Of course, the answer is a big no. The uniform testimony of scriptures reveals a different kind of leader whose lowly ways, meek spirit, humble men, defy the norm of the religious establishment of the day. He wore no special apparel. He rode no special chariot. In fact, it was once he rode on a donkey. He built no personal empire. Yeshua pointedly instructed his disciples to avoid the ostentatious lives of religious leaders of his day. In Matthew 23 to 5, he says, But all their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their fire like trees and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uttermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets to be called of men rabbi, rabbi. He instructed them to see the exercise of authority conferred on them as a call to serve others rather than an opportunity to exploit others or be served. In Matthew 20, 25, but Yeshua said unto them, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, rule over them, and they, and they that are great exercise authority over them. That's how it is in the world system. Leadership is about dominion, is about rule. But it shall not be so amongst you, but whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister. In other words, authority is about ministry, about serving. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Let be the one that will willingly receive the grace to render service that will help to bring people to the place where the Lord had ordained before the foundation of the world. Then he says, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and to give this life a ransom for many. So the Bible records him in such a way that we could see him in action. His disciples saw him. They saw him pray. Luke 11, 1 to 13. They saw him hungry. Mark 11, 12 to 14. And 19, 20. They saw him chase away the merchants who had defiled the temple. Mark 11, 15 to 17. He took the upper innermost tree to the Mount of Transfiguration. In Matthew 17, 1 to 13. During his passion at the Garden of Gethsemane, he took them also in Matthew 26, 36 to 45. And it is no wonder that on the day of his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, the religious leaders needed Judas Iscariot, an insider who they paid 30 pieces of silver to locate him for them in Matthew 26, 46 to 50. So it shows how simple and ordinary Yeshua lived. So simple that they needed an insider to identify him out of 12 people. He did not put up barriers, but gave disciples and ordinary people access to himself. So the woman with the issue of blood, for instance, was able to press through the crowd and touch the hem of his garment. Blind Bartimaeus was able to assess him, the great son of David, when he would he didn't have any hope. And he was able to assess him. Even the widely despised and, and avoided lepers of the day, because leprosy was one of the most terrible things that can happen to somebody. They had access to him. He could even, you know, touch them or speak to them. Oh, that Elohim may open our eyes to see the beauty of simplicity and the glory of the plain, ordinary life, devoid of the entrapments of human plastic glory. Simplicity with authority is an exceptional combination. It is the way of the kingdom. And in two critical instances, Yeshua brought the message home to his followers in bold relief. One of them is what we cited before, the case of Zebedee. You know, today, you know, when I was doing my quiet time, one of the scriptures I read was in Matthew 20, how the mother of James and John came to lobby for her sons to be to have the place of honor on the right and on the left of Yeshua in the, when he comes in his kingdom. And he told him, you know, you missed the mark. It's not about place of honor. 
It's not about title. It's not about who sits on the throne. It's all about who can serve. And he went on. That Matthew 20, read all of it from verse 20 all the way to verse 28. You see how he answered them. How he dealt with that issue. He was saying, therefore, that those who receive authority from him are supposed to deploy same to empower the saints put in their care. In this paradigm, we see the strange truth. The more Elohim lifts up a vessel, the onus lies with that person to lay it down as a footmatch for the Lord to use to facilitate feeding and maturation of the saints. When Yeshua had the last unforgettable encounter with Peter after the resurrection, he asked nothing of his disciples other than to feed his lambs and sheep. In John 21, read from verse 15 all the way to verse 17. Simon, do you love me, mother? He said, yes, he said, feed my sheep. Then he said, feed my lambs. So leadership is about that posture of steward who presents, who serves, who nurtures. Feeding sheep or shepherding is a sensitive role. It requires loving the sheep, being sensitive to know their stage, looking for the best food, nurturing them to maturity. And the outcome of this investment, when you make an investment using the sheep analogy, listen to this, all leaders. When you invest in the sheep the way the Lord wants, what will happen to the sheep? Sheep will produce three things. You see, when you see leaders who are looking to make money off people, who are looking to fleece people, who are looking to, 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 to exercise domin dominion over people, control people, they miss the mark. When you take the feeding sheep paradigm, a sheep that is well fed produces three things. Number one, it reproduces other sheep. So sheep will be a other sheep. Number two, they produce wool. The shearer comes once, twice, or three times a year. He shears the wool. He takes a, 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 a something that looks like a scissors and shears of the wool, and that's a major, huge asset. And the sheep is still there to produce more wool. Three, they produce milk for the shearer. So the sheep is alive, reproducing more sheep, producing wool, and producing milk. But if, on the other hand, the sheep is reading rough short and it dies the owner may just have sheep to eat for one weekend for one week and that's that that's gone and so this is an ex this is a major lesson for leaders in the body of yeshua feed his sheep nurture his sheep and when the sheep are well fed and well nurtured they're going to produce fruit they're going to reproduce they're going to bear more fruit they're going to do evangelism, they're going to reconcile the loss to the master, and they're going to, you know, from what the Lord blesses them, they will provide support for the ministry to go forward. It's a better way. How wonderful will the kingdom be if those Elohim has placed in authority cease to fleece the sheep and rather proceed to patiently invest in their holistic maturation? Well nurtured saints, when they mature, spiritually will always grow to be kingdom ambassadors they will live healthy prosperous lives and will lay the blessings elohim decorates them down for his glory they will not struggle to invest in the kingdom nor will they flinch from supporting the ministers elohim uses to shepherd them and to bless them that's why yeshua himself reflected the service paradigm of authority in john 13 when after supper he put away his clothing put on a towel and began to wash their feet. We see again the impetuousness of Peter who declined to be washed. Did Yeshua hail his display of humility, declining, declining service from Yeshua? Was it humility? No, Yeshua remonstrated with Peter and went on to specifically direct his disciples to follow his example of serving those they lead. He now said to them, in verse 15 of John 13, I've given you an example that you do as I've done to you. Very very son to you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. This is for us, all of us in leadership, that is about serving. The gift the Lord puts in you, 
the grace the Lord puts in you, the calling of the Lord upon your life is to be poured out to serve the brethren the Lord has given to you. Whether the brethren are in a small setting like family, whether it's in a small setting like a local assembly or, you know, an area that's a big enough like a city or like a nation or global service should be the hallmark of true authority. It was also in this context that Paul scored excellent grades when in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 he issued the battle cry, Be ye followers of me, even as I am also of Yeshua. And those who are vested with authority derive their validity only if they stay in line with the whole revealed counsel of Elohim. To walk outside the authority of Elohim as revealed in his word, and expect saints to submit to that deviation poses an exceptional challenge to those who know the truth. So when leadership is no longer about serving, about nurturing, about investing, it creates problem. It creates a problem. And Yeshua derived his enormous authority from the consecration he made concerning life in the body. The Bible says in Hebrews 1, 9, he loved righteousness and hated iniquity. For which the Father did what? Anointed him with the oil of gladness above his fellows. His motivation, therefore, was to come and do the will of the Father. It didn't matter what. John 4, 34. He said it. My food is to do the will of him that sent me. John 5, 30. I can have my own self do nothing. He said, I don't seek my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. John 6, 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And even in the Garden of Gethsemane, as we referenced before in Matthew 26, 37 to 42, what did he do? Even in that terrible state, say, Father, this cup is too heavy. Personally, I wish it would pass away from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done. So we live in a postmodern age of the West. In this scenario, humans have attained high ethical standards in business, in public service, and private life. Those who desire to be governors and presidents and CEOs, they start early to live lives which consider the huge, intense media focus that they will face later in life. Check some of these people who are presidents today, I mean, in democratic countries, they didn't just wake up. Some of them started early from kindergarten from primary school, from secondary school, and they began to avoid anything that will potentially compromise in anything that somebody can dig out and it will disqualify them. And the Lord said to us in Matthew 5, 20, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom. So the enormous authority of the kingdom granted to leaders is to order and reorder things to submit to the higher authority of Elohim. Whether in ministries, in congregations, the marketplace, governance and civil society. And that's why the lips of the leaders is to be used to preach and teach truth, issue godly instruction, release blessings. And this is so important. Leaders release blessings. Avoid anyone that crosses your path in ministry causes and all kinds of negative pronouncements against their destinies because lives of leaders should mirror that of Yeshua. That is why those in authority need to be intimate with the Lord, dwelling in the world, spending time in prayer, cultivating a deep level of sensitivity to Holy Spirit and His voice become critical imperatives. Paul the Apostle knew this reality when he decided to press into the fullness of Yeshua as revealed in Philippians chapter 3, 7 to 14, the mindset of Paul was that deep communion with Elohim will cause the saints to be changed from glory to glory. And that is true. If a leader spends quality time with the Lord in prayer, in the Word, and allows the Word to do its work, and Holy Spirit to use the Word to do its work, and the blood to do its work, the transformation the leader will receive from the Lord who is his high authority, will, will now go down. Because, like he said, the anointing came upon Aaron from the head to the bed and to the clothing. Those who would merchandise, therefore, their gifts and callings, and those who will hawk the prophetic for money, they miss the whole point. They are putting the cat before the horse. 
Authorities are called to be unconditional blessing to those Elohim will bring their way unconditionally. Pour out the spiritual gift. Pour out the grace upon the people. And they are to do so as unto the Lord. You serve as unto the Lord. It's not because of, oh, they are commending you, they are hailing you, they are praising you. No, you pour out as unto the Lord because it's he who gave the gift and it's he who will report to how we used it. So if he chooses to bless any leader with any instrument of authority, use it for his glory. So those who are inclined to be to, to emulate popish Rome and look for robes and other things to validate them and you know try to use that to dominate and rule and control people, they will ask themselves, who do they represent? Is it Yeshua or what? And now, men and brethren, that even Rome that Protestants used to rail at, they now have a leader who will not ride the big limousine that is his right as a head of state, you know, it begins to beg the question, how come that people who are alive in the spirit and filled with the spirit struggle with basic issues of service, of humility? Why is it that there's so much emphasis on what things that are needed to make one feel special? The hour has come when we must examine everything we do from having pages carry our Bibles, which is terrible. Have you ever seen any one doctor have somebody carry a stethoscope? Have you ever seen anybody, any profession, having a page carry their instrument of ministry? It's only ministry that the more people seem to grow up, the more they are ashamed of their Bible, the more they need a page to carry their Bible, a page to carry handkerchief, and all kinds of things we have learned from Babylon. These things need to be taken away. As ministers import the ways of Hollywood and its sleazy fashion into the church, we must reflect on what will happen when the chief shepherd appears. First Peter 5 says from verse 1, The elders which are among you are exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Yeshua, and the partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of Elohim which is amongst you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, not because of money that will come out of it, but of a ready mind to pour out, need has been lots over Elohim's heritage, to rule over them, no, but being examples to the flock, that the flock can see and know that you can that a leader can serve the Lord passionately, pour out all, it encourages them to know. Just as the leader, the, the, the Lord says, Elijah was a man of like passion. So also, when leaders demonstrate service, demonstrate the poured out life, the brethren can see and know, and Satan cannot confuse them because they've seen the example in leadership. So, neither has been lost over Elohim's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive the crown of glory that faded not away. Brothers and sisters, it is so important that we understand these things and take them to heart. You know what? We're going to uh, round up here today and the rest of the uh, lesson will take it as lesson five. So, by way of assignment, number one, please summarize this lesson. Two, please share any three new insights you gain today. Summarize it generally. And what are three points you can say you are holding? Brothers and sisters, we continue in this course and we pray that the brethren will receive the substance of this course so that the brethren who are in the Reformation movement can experience godly leadership, godly authority, authority that empowers Authority that points to the Father. Authority that uh, demonstrates Yeshua how he will have done it. And when that is so, then people can truly be discipled easier. People can truly be trained for ministry and there will be change because that is catalyst of reformation. Through authority catalyzes the reformation of the church, restoration of the headship of Yeshua and inspires through revival. As people see that their leaders are truly subject to the Lord, 
doing what he wants them to do the way he wants them to do it. They receive it and they are empowered and they are encouraged. We're going to pray and take an announcement. But please, would you kindly share this video? Share it to friends and family and the Lord bless you as you receive it. So this is the announcement if you share it. Now I'll pray now and that will be that for today. Father in heaven, thank you so much because you are good. Your mercies endure forever. Your word has gone forth. We ask you to just have your way. Take the word. Do with the word what you want to do. Bring about transformational exercise of authority. Lord, in humility and in simplicity that your grace shall prevail. That this word will be a fruit in the lives of the saints by your spirit. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Let your name be glorified. Thank you for answers to our prayer. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want. You can also, if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class, you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it. You can also subscribe to our channels. This YouTube, gsom.tv and we also have a Telegram channel, gsom media. You can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.